Running gun filmmaking is incredibly fun and it is one of my favorite ways to capture anything. But as I'm sure you know, it's incredibly overwhelming and when you arrive on set, there are a bunch of things that could happen. One, you could draw a blank because you don't know what gear that you had. Another one is that you haven't fully analyzed the space. You don't know if you've captured everything. Or the other one is you just draw a complete blank because you, you're you on set and you're like, oh my God, people are asking me questions. I don't know what to answer. So I sort of made a list of five things that I think you should follow when going into this sort of environment when it comes to making run and gun content. group of birds called colonial water birds. Those are the gulls, the terns, the cormorants, the herons, the egrets. Uh, those are the one, those are freshwater colonial water birds. And they've been a passion of mine since, since third year university. The first thing I was talking about is gear. What are you packing your bag before you head off? Now, if you are running gun, you wanna be light and nimble, so stuff that can fit inside your backpack. Personally, I don't like carrying around a lot of big bulky gear, so what I'll normally use is my Sony a7 III, a wide angle lens that can sort of diversify, so I'll have a 16 to 35 wide, and that can sort of act as if I wanna capture any big wide shots, or even just zoom in for any detail stuff. It's great on a gimbal. Um, for example, yesterday when I was on this boat ride, uh, I captured all of my wide boat shots and also just some really stunning photographs. I love to kind of partner up video and photo, so this is a really great lens to partner with that. Now with that lens and any lens that you're shooting on, make sure you have a partnering ND filter depending on what time of day you're shooting at. Now the other bits of gear that I carry within my bag is a longer lens, a tighter lens. Now sometimes it's a 50 millimeter. In this case of yesterday's situation, it was a Zeiss 85 1.5 millimeter lens. And uh, between the 16 to 35 and the 85, I sort of had a diverse range of focal lengths from these nice, really tight shots to these wide shots. And I was able to have a really good catalog of framing. Now the other piece of gear that I carried was a drone, which I crashed yesterday, but we're not gonna talk about that. I totally lost it. It's it's gone, it's down in the water. I'm still upset about it. The second, and then the other stabilizer that I had in my bag was a gimbal. Yeah, I fit it inside this backpack. It's amazing, the Ronin S, really good. And then also on top of that, I brought a lav kit. So out of that range of gear, that's sort of what I had in my backpack. And always, always, always carry spare batteries and extra SD cards. I cannot explain how often I have forgotten uh, an SD card or ran out of battery. So just always make sure you have an extra battery, if not two, and then extra SD cards. I don't care how charged up your battery is, something could happen and it's always good to have a secondary. Oh, and then the final piece of gear that I always make sure I have is my cell phone. Worst case scenario, if by chance the camera breaks, I drop it in the water like the drone or anything, I have this thing always as backup. Now my next crucial tool for you filmmakers who are doing run and gun stuff is always have an audio recording device. Now that could either be your Rode video mic that you mount on top of the camera, or it could be lav mics. I absolutely 100% recommend having some additional audio recording happening on set. Never think, oh, we'll just record it all in ADR. I'm a huge fan of doing post audio by applying fully and elevating sound effects through post production, but you need some sort of raw track. So just put a microphone on top of your camera, make sure you have that on set because it is so terrible when you're in post production, you don't have any raw audio. Now, fortunately for me, when I was filming with Chip yesterday, I actually got him to wear a lab the whole time. And just as he was talking through his process, uh, I was able to just capture uh, his raw audio. And it just turned out really amazing because it was, it was authentic interviewing as opposed to just sort of like, hey, tell me about this thing. And it just felt really good. Uh, and then also my camera just running raw audio as well. So if you can try and record two sources of audio, if not, one is really good. And just make sure you have something to work off of because when you have zero audio, obviously it gives you a lot more work in post-production and it's so much harder to source sounds that kind of sound similar and you're never gonna get the exact sound from that exact environment. And especially with doing documentaries, sometimes sounds actually need to be accurate. For example, yesterday when we were filming these birds, they made a very specific noise that um, we had to stay accurate to the destination. I couldn't just Google search it and pop it in because it, there isn't really a whole lot of those online. 
Third thing for running gun filmmakers that I think you must understand is your space, where you're going, what you're in. Far too often I've gone into a space and just started filming stuff and then all of a sudden I take a glance away and realize that I forgot about all the stuff behind me. I did like a 180 filming perspective but didn't realize that there was a whole other thing 360 degrees around me. And so the best thing that you can do is obviously capture what needs to be captured in the time, but take a second and take a deep breath and give yourself an, a moment to gain the space and understand what's in there. And I have a whole video on Premium Beat that, I'll, that talks more about this, but essentially give yourself some time to digest what's going on and learn a little bit about the space. Ask the locals, ask the person who you're with and take time to gain in that space because you're going to recognize a lot of things that your camera's focal length just won't capture. Now let's talk about coverage, important things to film while you're in that space. I'm a huge fan of focal length diversity and best documentaries out there or the best run and gun filmmaking out there really utilizes a wide range of focal lengths to make it feel like you are in a space differently. And so by diversifying focal lengths really diversifies the experience and elevates the audience within that moment. So I sort of have a shot list of three angles that I always wanna capture, which is the wide, medium, and close up. The wide, you only need a few of those, and those are sort of your, your space establishers. Now, I was gonna use a drone shot for this documentary, but we all know what happened. Uh, so then I ended up just using my 16 to 35, capturing long, rolling out wide shots that just gathered all that information in. And then uh, once I knew I had a bunch of those figured out, I snagged a quick couple shots on my camera for photographs, and then I used my 85 millimeter on the gimbal and just captured some really sweet close-up detail shots. Just because you're doing run and gun doesn't mean you can't get cinematic and use cinema prime lenses. And then finally, my fifth tip for doing any sort of like run and gun documentary filmmaking or capturing stuff is always think for the edit. Always think a little bit ahead. Um, I cannot tell you the amount of times that I've gone into the edit, started putting together footage and just had to somehow piece together the things uh, with weird transitions and unnecessary cuts and things that just didn't make sure it flowed because either the shooter who was capturing it or myself who filmed it didn't think a few steps ahead. You should always be piecing the, together the story as you capture. And one of the best ways to know this is actually to have edited something in the past. So if you want to know what you need, always think of your beginning, middle, and end and proper story structure. How is this piecing together? Usually a great formula for that is to make sure you have sort of your, your dialogue, something to piece it together, your sound effects, your audio. The next thing is just sort of capturing your frame diversity. And then make sure that as you're shooting, you're like, okay, this thing can go here, this thing can go here, and this will assemble the entire story. So think of your story while you're there and it just becomes so much more helpful. Um, there is just way too many stories that just feel that they're cut together fast because they didn't get enough stuff. And that's when transition travel videos exist more than actual stories. A whole other rant. If you like the look of this tutorial or the footage that I had included in it, uh, there's some let's down there that you guys can check out. Uh, and if you are interested in the gear that I use, um, all of that's down there. There's a little bit of affiliate link, but it keeps gives oxygen to the channel. so. Stuff. Before this video is over, and while I'm taking these shots for the thumbnail, I thought the lighting was really good, so I thought this would be good to do this. Um, I want to do a quick plug for our product, Pocket Film School. Pocket Film School is an online learning program that teaches you all aspects of filmmaking. The reason why I'm plugging it in this video specifically is because the five tips that I brought up, I bring up 500 more in this course. It's bite-sized course episodes, everything from like one to two minute little episodes that give you the knowledge to teach you everything from music music composition, producing, directing, editing, costume design, wardrobe, that I say producing, writing, cinematography, editing, VFX, like there's just everything. It's a Grand Slam pack package of just amazing content from some of the best creators that I know from Toronto. So anyway, uh, if you guys want to learn a little bit more about that, give that a gander. Um, I got to clean up all this stuff. All my gear is out and everywhere and it's just ridiculous. Zach, you're ridiculous. You're like, Zach crazy guy. And uh, if you want to watch me wave my hands around more as I talk and do these videos, I'm sorry. Um, they just decide to go up. I don't know what to do with my hands. There's some buttons down there that you can click that can allow you to follow these hand gestures more and more of these tips, tricks, and tutorials. Anyways, folks, thank you so much for watching. Thank you for tuning in. I love you. Goodbye. Keep making some great stuff.